Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we have a story of a man who found out his wife has been cheating on him with a co-worker, and this is what he finally did. Here's the full story with multiple updates. I, 33 male, my wife, 27 female. We've been together for 7 years, married for 2. Basically all of my wife's 20s have been with me. We have no children. We've never had any major fights or arguments. I always made it a point to fix any issues as they arose. One thing my parents taught me is never go to bed mad. And it's something I honestly have always tried to live by. The only major issue has been my low testosterone and erectile dysfunction. Her libido absolutely dwarfs mine. I tried to explain it to her. I want to want to have sex, but sometimes it'd be like if someone asked me if I wanted to go watch golf. Zero interest. It's something I didn't work as hard as I could to correct. My doctor prescribed testosterone injections, but I'm deathly afraid of needles and didn't inject myself. My wife is the same way and didn't inject me, so I relied on the little blue pill to perform, and she didn't want to know when I took it so that it could feel spontaneous. This put a huge strain on our romantic life. Beyond that, we've always been happy. In early August I got COVID and quarantined for 7 weeks, long story, by myself. She went to stay with family. This was a very long almost 2 months for me. I never left the house except to get tested again, and when it was positive, I went straight back home. The cabin fever was real. My wife came over every day after work. She'd leave groceries on the porch, then she sat in her car in the driveway. I stood 8 feet away, and we just talked for a while. I looked forward to those 30 minutes more than anything. It was the only face-to-face -face human interaction I got. One day we had a fight about the electric bill. She told me I was using too much and needed to be careful, since I was out of work and not getting paid, money was tight. This made me irrationally angry. I knew what she was spending money on. Clothes, going shopping, out to eat with friends and family. None of this bothered me. I knew she needed things while she was away from home and we had more than enough money or afford the occasional dining out trip. I had never mentioned any of this spending to her, so for her to pick at the electric bill really irritated me. I was there 24-7 for a month, of course the bill would be higher. So I made the smart crap remark I guess I'll just turn everything off then. Childish, I know. I regretted saying it as soon as said it. I knew she was only worried about the bills. I apologized for handling it poorly, told her I was frustrated at being cooped up. She didn't talk to me for three weeks, didn't bring food, didn't text to ask how I was feeling, didn't answer my texts, nothing. When I finally tested negative, I texted her and told her we needed to talk, that I was negative and she could come home. She told me she was visiting a female friend out of state and we'd talk when she got back. We talked a week later. She told me she wasn't coming home. She said she doesn't love me anymore and it was over. Boom. Just like that, out of the blue. She said I didn't speak her love language, that she needed physical touch and she just fell out of love with me. I had no idea what love languages were and I assumed her need for physical touch was referring to my erectile dysfunction. Like, I had never heard of the book about love languages. So I googled it, found it on Audible and listened to it at work. Twice, as an aside, I cannot recommend this book enough. If you are in a relationship, thinking about starting a relationship, or even if you're single, this helped me understand what my wife needed to feel loved. I love you isn't always enough. If I get nothing else out of this marriage, this knowledge alone will help me in my next relationship. Armed with this new knowledge, including that I even had a love language and she hadn't been speaking it either, I asked her to have lunch so we could talk. I told her I read the book and I understood her now and that we can totally fix this if we want to. I asked her if she knew my love language, and she was a deer in the headlights. She honestly hadn't expected me to ask that question. I drove home my point that neither of us has been taking care of each other's needs and if we both truly wanted to start doing that, our marriage could be saved. Nope. She said she felt no romantic feelings for me anymore. We'd make great friends, but it is over. I was crushed. During my quarantine, my wife mentioned to me how she and a male mutual friend, someone I've worked with and known for 12 years, had started walking together to lose weight. I honestly thought absolutely nothing of it. He's married with kids. My wife and him went through training at work together years ago and bonded. They've been friends for several years. Now I know all of you know where this is going. At the time I had no concerns at all. But in hindsight the red flag should have been smacking me upside the head. A week or so after our last talk, my wife came to the house to get a few things and asked if we could go for a drive. She was feeling down and wanted to talk, so I of course agreed. Then she told me she was hurt because her friend's wife wouldn't let him hang out with her anymore. Alarm bells started ringing. I asked her why she wouldn't let them see each other and she said because she thought they were having an affair. I asked her if they were and she said no, they've never done anything. 
I asked her why the wife would think they were having an affair and she said it was because they spent five or six days a week together since the start of my quarantine. My wife even bought their kids presents when she was out of state visiting her friend. The other woman promptly threw them away. Then she told me, to my face, he just makes my life so full. It was a total gut punch. My wife telling me, without shame or hesitation, that another man makes her life full. I told her she needed to level with me and tell me whether or not she saw him as more than a friend. And she said that doesn't matter. That should have been the end of it for me. But this woman is my wife and I felt that I had to try and save our marriage all the way up until it's officially over. We didn't talk much about our relationship for a while, though we did hang out more frequently. In the back of my mind I knew the only reason she was spending more time with me was because the other man's wife wouldn't let them see each other anymore. The other wife found me on Facebook and called me, told me what she knew and asked if I knew anything. She told me she left a recorder in his truck and had a recording of them at least making out, maybe more. But she could hear movement and they weren't talking. That hurt. She also said her and her husband are going to marriage counseling and they're trying to fix it. It was a good talk. Both of us were hurting, there was no anger or malice toward each other. One night a few weeks ago my wife was at my house so we could catch up on a show we'd been neglecting. As she was leaving, she said I love you, like she always does, and I gave my usual I love you more response. It's something we've always done, ever since the first time we told each other we loved each other. This time felt different, because we both knew the I love you more was true. We made eye contact and my wife immediately started ugly crying. Full on hysterical sobs, she walked up to me and hugged me tighter than she had in months and just cried. I held her until she calmed down a bit and then we went for a drive, because that's the best way for her to calm down. We had a long talk. It was the closest we had come yet to actually trying to fix it. She said she had thought leaving me was the right choice for her, but now she had no idea. She didn't know what she wanted or what she was doing, and she just needed time to figure things out. She mentioned marriage counseling, and I told her that marriage counseling is a must before she moved back in with me. I told her I'd do whatever it took to try and fix it, as long as we actually tried. I left that night feeling really optimistic that there was still hope. And then, just a week later, she was back to it is over for sure mentality. So now we're in this weird waiting game. I'm still stupidly waiting for her to come home. She is waiting on her boyfriend to leave his wife. And in the meantime her and I are still hanging out. She calls me asking if we can go do something because she's lonely, and I stupidly agree. I told her this should probably stop because while we're together, she is just hanging out with a friend. I am hanging out with my wife. Since she left, I did go to my doctor and get on antidepressants and testosterone. I asked my doctor if she could inject the med for me and she is, every week. I do feel a lot better, either because of the happy pills or the testosterone, I don't know. As for my marriage, I'm still clinging to something that is probably gone. All of my plans for the future involve this woman. I couldn't wait to meet our kids. I couldn't wait to meet the woman she would be as a mother. I couldn't wait to experience the rest of my life with her. Travel, grow old, have grandkids, all of it. And now I'm alone in the house we bought, and I have no idea what my future looks like now. I'm lost. That's pretty much where I am now. Like I said, I don't know if this counts as infidelity, because she did leave me. Though I am sure she had an emotional relationship with this man while I was quarantined possibly before. If you've made it this far, thank you so much for reading. I know it was a long winding tale, but it helped a bit to get it all out. If you have any suggestions, advice, words of encouragement, anything, I could really use it right about now. Thanks. I just wanted to thank you all for your comments. I have read them all so far and am reading them as they still trickle in. Too much to respond to individually, but I just want you all to know how much I appreciate you. Some were harsher than others, perhaps unnecessarily so, but in the end, you all helped me understand that this is infidelity. This is an extramarital affair, and I should be pissed out of my mind. I've been so crushed at losing the woman that I love that I didn't realize that woman doesn't exist anymore. The woman I fell in love with died the moment she left me for another man. I'm just gonna keep going one day at a time. Busy myself with hobbies, revisit ones I've put aside over the years. Something to keep my mind occupied. The hard part is moving past those random intrusive thoughts about her. They happen all the time. Something as simple as seeing a car in her favorite color is enough to do it. Oh, she'd like that one. Or smelling her favorite food. Hearing our songs on the radio. Eating at our favorite restaurants. She's everywhere, even though she's gone. This is a hard, painful pill to swallow, and I don't really know how I'm going to keep going. It doesn't make me feel any better to come to this realization. Anyway, thanks for all your comments and advice. And thanks to anyone who comments. I am reading them all. I promise. 
I told my wife no. One piece of advice I kept getting in the last thread was to tell her no when she wanted to hang out, to stop being available for her whenever she wanted. So I went to where she's staying on Christmas. The people she's staying with have become friends of mine over the past seven years that I've been with my wife. So I wanted to wish them a Merry Christmas. My wife and I also had gifts to exchange. We went to her room to do this. She bought me some shirts, a wallet, which she buys me every year. I got her a couple expensive Funko Pops of her favorite characters in a TV show. She looked over at her desk at a video game and shook her head and chuckled. I looked at the game, which she bought for herself while I was with her a couple weeks back, and asked what she was laughing about. She said that isn't the copy I bought for myself. She was basically letting me know what the other man had bought her for Christmas. I was floored by the audacity of it all, like it was some sort of competition. Never mind the fact that each of the pops I bought cost as much as the game. She then said she wanted to go for a drive and asked if I wanted to go with her. I said no. She said so you're just gonna go home and do nothing. And I said probably play video games. I told her that I didn't think we should hang out anymore. That she already told me what she wanted months ago. And if we're really done, then I need to start moving on. She shrugged and said okay in the most dismissive tone she could muster. And that was that. I went home and we haven't spoken since. Just wanted to share this with you guys. I know it's a small thing and I don't feel like I want anything here. But I know this is a necessary step if I'm ever gonna dig my way out of this depression I'm in. Edit. I am going to get in touch with the other man's wife and tell her everything I know so far. I've been doing my best to protect my wife's dignity, for whatever reason. And not many people in my life know what's going on between us. They know that my wife left and that's about it. For the most part my struggle with this has been completely alone. Yeah, my friends and family know that she left but they don't know why. As a husband I feel obligated to protect my wife even if it's from her own bad decisions. I don't believe she is doing any of this out of malice towards me. A lot of people here seem to think that what she's doing is being done intentionally to hurt me. Honestly, I feel like when I was under quarantine she spent time with this co-worker and developed feelings for him. Of course, none of that matters in the end. What happened happened and I need to figure out how to move on. Hey everyone, it's been 7 months since my last post here. A hard seven months. I got a lot of great advice in my original two posts. Some I followed, some I didn't, and I thought I'd share how everything turned out. Shortly after the start of the year, I went mostly no contact. We didn't do lunch or anything at all, and most of our conversations were strictly business. What's the password to the Allstate account? Or do you know where Allstate account is? Sometimes we would go a month or more without talking at all. I know this isn't the absolutely no contact everyone suggested but it's as close as I could manage. Despite this, I still yes, foolishly held out hope of reconciliation. That hope waned as the months went on, and eventually I accepted that the marriage truly is over. She is still waiting for the other man to leave his wife and kids, but he hasn't done it and it doesn't look like he will, but she's certain that he'll choose her one day. Today her and I went down to the courthouse and filed our divorce paperwork. She isn't fighting for the house or any money so it should just be a quick and clean process. Now we're just waiting for the court to set a date to see a judge. She told me again that she wants to be friends, that none of this was easy for her. I told her that I couldn't be friends with her. I can't just act like everything is fine. Maybe one day, but not anytime soon. And besides, if she gets what she wants and the other guy leaves his family for her, he will not want her seeing me anyways. She said I'll do what I want. So I said even if you get everything you want. If he leaves his family and picks you, you're going to ignore his feelings like you have mine. She didn't answer. Most of our friends and family know that we're separated at this point, but most still don't know of her affair with the other man. I know the general consensus was to put her on blast so everyone knew the truth. The ones who need to know do know, and I'm satisfied with that. I am contemplating making a Facebook post just saying that we filed for divorce. I'm not going to go into details, the people who need to know the truth know, and I don't want to start drama before we see the judge. I've had a rough day, mostly, I'm just really sad. A lot of things I thought I was over have crept to the surface again. Mostly I'm just sad that the woman I love is gone forever. Because when I look at her now, I don't see the woman I married. I feel like that woman died a year ago. Anyway, it seems this chapter of my life is coming to an end, and now the process of healing and moving forward can begin in earnest. I don't know how long it will be before I try dating. I feel like I need to be 100% over this before I try. The next woman doesn't deserve to be elbow deep in my baggage. I have to learn how to flirt and date again. Wish me luck. Today was our court date. 
We went and stood in front of a judge. He asked if we both agreed to the terms of our divorce decree. We said yes, and that was it. An eight-year relationship ended in five minutes. It was kind of a surreal feeling. I had been getting ready for this day to come for a year, but now that it was finally here, I realized I wasn't ready at all. While we were waiting for the judge I just sat there thinking of all the good times we had and how we won't have any more good times in the future, at least not together. An overwhelming sadness overcame me. We used to make each other so happy. At one point I made a comment to her I still can't believe all this happened. I thought I was going to be married to you until I died. And she said well, it's not like we can't get married again in the future. And I said no, we won't. This is it. I wanted to do marriage counseling. But you had no interest in fixing things. Why would we think anything would be different if we got back together? I asked her if her boyfriend had left his wife yet. And she said she doesn't have a boyfriend. So I asked her then why is his picture on your phone's background? She didn't respond. So, she still clearly is seeing him. I found out a while back that he quit his job. His wife gave him an ultimatum. Either he leaves the place where he worked with my wife, or she would leave him. So clearly he has no intentions of leaving his wife. And for some reason my wife is still waiting for him. I am planning on giving his wife another call. I did end up making a post on Facebook. I kept it cordial, explained to everyone that we had been separated for a year, that we were divorced now, and I was thankful for all of her family loving and accepting me from the beginning. I asked everyone to keep both of us in their prayers. I kept the reason vague and didn't mention the infidelity. I know a lot of you were telling me to put her on blast, but in the end that just seemed pointless. Instead I just said that our lives are taking us in different directions and there is nothing we can do to fix it. Her sisters know the truth, her mother knows the truth, her best friend knows the truth. They wouldn't let her paint me in a bad light if she started lying. Besides, the divorce is done, the property is mine. There is nothing left for me to do but move forward. Airing out our dirty laundry does not help me move forward. There were a lot of nice comments from friends, her family and mine. A lot of people were shocked, sad, they wished us the best, etc. So that's that. Now all that's left for me to do is turn the page and start a new chapter. I know it isn't going to be easy. I have a lot of things about myself and my life that I need to fix before I even entertain moving on romantically. But I'll get there. My sister made a comment that really struck home. I will share it here with the hope that her words help someone else. You have a full and wonderful life waiting ahead for you. A blank canvas. Don't let the stark whiteness keep you from painting whatever the heck you want. They'll make this new, unexpected chapter completely crappy. You are the single most incredible person I've ever known. People reap what they sow. You don't need to worry about your harvest. And I can't wait to see all the good things come to fruition for you. It's coming, and you deserve every bit of it. It's been over for a year now. Separated since October 2020, divorce finalized on August 11, 2021. She has since left her adulterous relationship and her partner and his wife are still going to marriage counseling. She has a new boyfriend, and she chose what would have been our wedding anniversary to make her new relationship Facebook official. The other day my ex-wife called me for the first time since D-Day. We've been 100% no contact since then, so it was a surprise to see her name on the caller ID. I answered. This is what she said. Were your parents in town yesterday and did they use my number to buy steaks and soda? This holiday season, the company we both work for, separate locations, gave us $100 tied to our phone number as a thank you. I told her no, of course not. Not only would they not use her number, but my sister is currently borrowing their only vehicle so they don't have a way into town. She said well they're the only ones I can think of who would use my card to buy steaks and soda. I said well, they didn't. Your app has a receipt on it. Have the manager check the camera and see who it was. She said oh I will, don't worry. A couple hours later she texted me again and said found the culprit sorry. I should have just left it at that. But her accusing my parents of stealing really pissed me off. First time I hear your voice in two months and you accuse my parents of stealing. My parents aren't thieves. I don't know what they ever did to you for you to think so poorly of them. Maybe next time, check the camera before you make accusations. She said wow okay, I wasn't trying to say they did it on purpose. They're just the only ones I know who would buy steaks and sodas with my card. You need to get out of your feelings and stop treating me this way because I left you. Besides, your dad would have been the one shopping and he's always too inebriated to know what's going on, so. And that was when something clicked in my head. This whole time I had been thinking about what we could have done differently. What if we had gone to marriage counseling? Would it have helped? My parents have been nothing but good to her for our entire relationship. My dad never did anything for her to talk about him that way. She said it just to try and hurt me. What followed was the first real conversation we've had about everything. 
I learned that, to this day, she genuinely believes she did nothing wrong. It wasn't an affair, because even emotional affairs don't count. She's allowed to have feelings for another man if she never does anything physical. She said that I'm just an angry, bitter, sad man with no drive and I always have been, and that she couldn't try to fix me for the rest of her life. This is untrue. I was happy with her, regardless of how I felt lately. We had good times together. I realized that if she genuinely believes she did nothing wrong, we were doomed anyway. Even if we had tried to fix it, it never would have lasted. Even in the conversation about the steaks and sodas she couldn't give a genuine apology for accusing my parents of stealing. Instead she doubled down and attacked my dad for having an alcohol problem, even though he has never drunkenly used her number instead of his before. At the end of the conversation, she said I will be coming to get my things soon. Be there or don't, I don't care. Yes, all of her things are still in my house a year plus later, right where she left them. Here she is trying to take control of me and my house and my life. Not gonna happen. I told her I have been packing and moving everything to the living room. Then I asked her not to bring her new boyfriend to my house when she came to get her stuff. She said don't be ridiculous. He's across the state furnishing our new home. They've been together for a month, and supposedly she's quitting her job of nine years and moving across the state. Again, trying to hurt me. I've been as low as a crippled cricket's crap for over a year. I've been stuck in this cycle of depression and anger that I couldn't find a way out of. This one conversation with my ex-wife made me realize who she is and what I'm getting away from. She's a narcissist, a manipulator, a liar. I am hurting less now about it being over, but I'm left wondering if any of it was ever real for her. Either way, this chapter of my life is ending. For real. When someone shows you who they are, believe them. The fog is lifting for me. And I hope it does for you too, if you find yourself lost in it as well. Edit. So this post was a week ago, and in that time I've had time to reflect on everything. I am in a much better place than I was before that conversation detailed above. I've known all along that life needed to move forward. But seeing her say the things she did about my family and I, along with her taking zero responsibility for her actions, really made me see things differently. She wasn't who I thought she was at the end, probably not ever. There is no going back and I no longer even want to or wish we could. Yes, I've been playing all kinds of video games. I briefly got back into photography but my work schedule has kinda hindered that. I'm never out and about when the light is good. I want to start working out, see work schedule, and I definitely want to look for a different job. I'm considering opening a business of my own. Resale shop, maybe used video games, I don't know. Or maybe I'll just pour more of my energy into my baby eBay store. Either way, I want a change of career as soon as possible. I've been browsing here in r slash depression for a while, mostly lurking in the shadows, reading others' struggles, reading the advice given. And I am so thankful to have been able to read all the words of encouragement these subreddits have provided. It has helped me immensely. Anyway, when I was 13 years old, I walked into the house after school. My dad was sitting stony-faced in his chair. My mother was wailing. The worst, most gut-wrenching sound I've ever heard in my life. Her brother had just slaughtered himself because his wife was having an affair. That day has stuck with me my entire life. The agony my mom was going through was something that cut me like a knife. I never wanted to inflict that kind of pain on my family. So over the years, even when my depression got oppressive, self-slaughtering never crossed my mind. Since my wife's affair, however, the call of the void has been coming more frequently. Passing thoughts like F, I could just turn my wheel slightly into oncoming traffic and all this pain will be gone. I could drive off this embankment into the lake. It'd be years before anyone found me or when a cop was waiting in line in front of me at the store. Take his weapon. These frequent thoughts scared the crap out of me. I know they're normal, but I'd have them so often. So I started doing things to occupy my mind. I started taking pictures again. I started fishing again. I started gaming again. I made a point to spend every single Sunday watching football with my dad. I broke out of my cocoon of pain and made a concerted effort to go out with friends at least once a week. I stopped letting what happened in the past dictate my present and future. My wife had an affair. We're divorced. That life is gone and it isn't coming back. But that doesn't mean my life is gone for good. If you're just starting your journey to recovery, it can seem like an impossible thing. There's a period of time, and it's different for everyone, where it genuinely feels like life is over. There is nothing to look forward to or strive for now that your supposed partner in life has betrayed you. Friends and family will give you that old cliché, time heals all wounds. They're only half right. It will take time and effort to get through this. I can tell you from experience that it won't happen overnight. There isn't a magic button to press. But if you start doing the small things, eat right, get enough sleep, get out of your own head and spend time with friends, 
family, or even alone outdoors, rekindle old hobbies, find new ones. One day you'll realize you haven't had a negative thought in a week or more. I'm in a much better place than I was this time last year. Am I 100%? Of course not. I don't know that I'll ever look at love or relationships the same way. To quote Pearl Jam, a love gone bad, turned my world to black, tattooed all I see. All that I am, all I'll be. But despite that, I am finally feeling optimistic about my future and my life. If you're still struggling, I hope my advice here helps you and that you find peace soon. Life didn't end with your spouse's affair. I know you might not believe it now, I sure as hell didn't, but it is true. Sometime in early 2021 my ex's AP left the company we worked at to preserve his marriage and finally ended his affair with my ex. I've seen him at his new job handful of times since all of this went down. We've made eye contact, but I've never said a word to him about any of this. Not during, not after. Had my ex-wife's AP been a stranger, I'd be more mad at my spouse than him. But I've known him for 12 years. I've always considered him a friend. We would talk about our families every day. He knew how much I loved my wife, and he effed her anyway. I had no desire to confront him about all of this, especially since my life is moving forward and that chapter is closed as far as I'm concerned. But today, a mutual friend reached out to me and asked if I'd be willing to talk to my wife's AP. My immediate response was tell him I wish him well in life, but I have nothing to say to him. The mutual friend said I probably shouldn't tell you this, but he's not doing too good. He told me a few weeks ago that he's thought about slaughtering himself. I said he's not doing well, and they said he feels really guilty about what happened. He said he lost a lot of weight and everyone started noticing him and he let it go to his head. I told them that, yeah, he should feel guilty. He did it. But obviously I don't want him to slaughter himself. The friend said that my ex's AP just wants to talk, to figure out if the stories she told him were true. Compare notes, basically. I said what? Is he trying to imply she told him we were separated? He has a phone. We've been friends for over a decade. It would have taken two seconds to call or text me to find out before he had sex with her. I told the friend that if the AP needs to talk to me to move past all this and feel better, for closure or whatever, then I'll talk to him. But our friendship is over forever. I can never have a normal conversation with this guy. Did you catch the game last night? Meanwhile, I'd always be thinking about how he has had sex with the woman I loved. I know he's not 100% to blame, but he played a large part in ending what, at the time, was the best thing about my life. My marriage. This has forever changed how I will look at love and relationships. I'm not sure what he's going to want from me. Forgiveness. Can't do it. Not now at least. I don't know how I'm going to balance my anger with him and my desire to help him. If he's truly feeling bad to the point of contemplating self-slaughtering, then I need to find the words to help him heal. I just don't know if I can. OP. Encourage your friend to seek professional help for the situation, as you lack the expertise to assist those who betray your trust. While his well-being is important, he does have a supportive network with his spouse and children. Focus on your own mental health and the progress you've made. Don't sacrifice it for those who have wronged you, whether or not he was the one in a marriage with you. It's astonishing how some individuals behave. Continue progressing forward and allow others to handle the challenges posed by this supposed friend. Good luck and stay strong. Thank you so much for watching till the end. If you really like my videos then don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Have a good day.